Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Life, and uh, what I want to do today is just kind of give you a tour of my knife shop, kind of the way that I have it set up right now. A lot of you guys really miss the shipping container shop, and there's a certain extent that I do too, except that this winter has been so cold, and I, I really, the thing I love the most about this shop is the climate control, and then the fact that it doesn't shake when it's really, really windy outside, that's always nice too. There's a Japanese term that a lot of management companies like to use, it's called Kaizen, Continuous Incremental Improvements, and that's kind of the way that any shop setup is has been for me in my experience i'm sure you find the same thing as well i always wish that i could just come up with a brilliant idea and boom set the shop up like that but it never works that way this is a, it's always an ongoing process and you're moving stuff and you're adjusting stuff you know i'll add something then i'll take it away and then i'll i'll get rid of a tool and then i'm like i want that tool back and it's just oh on and on and on but i thought i'd just share with you today where i'm at right now there's a few changes i do have pending that i'd like to get done in the next couple weeks but let me just kind of walk you around here and i'll show you kind of how this is set up and then we'll go over what I want to change, why I like it, why I don't like it. Let's go. All right, so let's head over to this end of the shop. Can walk you in from this way. Obviously this is a two car garage and my idea is that I can use that half for my knife shop and then still park the vehicle in this half. Now having said that, last night I was, uh, I got the forge out for the first time this year in, the, in my anvil and I started just beating on some metal, just goofing around and I kind of got to thinking, you know what? What if I brought the forge inside? Now that's not really my plan, but I thought, man, I could just double my workspace. You know, my wife told me, she said, if, if you want to have the whole garage, just use the whole garage. But at the same time, I do like parking my vehicles in here, so it's one of these things I'm, I'm like fighting with it. Uh, but as of right now, we still park our van in here, but uh, we'll see. Let me show you kind of some of the changes I've done and I'll just kind of walk you in from this way. So coming in from outside, uh, this table here, originally I had my lathe on its own stand and my milling machine on its own stand. Uh, I built a table, a bench for both of those. I'll show you that on the other side. And then what I did here is I put a six foot pony wall just so that I could keep some of the chips from coming over here when I'm machining because you know they kind of get over here underneath the van and then you trace them into the house and it's just, it's really frustrating. So I'm really hoping it's gonna help mitigate that situation. And I thought while I'm at it, I had my buffers each on their own pedestal stand and I thought, you know what? I may as well just put a ledge on here and kind of mount them. And I'm really liking this. I've been using this setup like this for a while. It's nice because you keep the floor clean, allows you to sweep up in here. And I just need to do a little bit more work on some power management, uh, run some more cords and outlets and stuff, but this is really good right here. Now, another one of the big changes I've done is I moved my toolbox there from right here. The reason for that is a lot of these are automotive tools and when working on vehicles in this bay, it's obviously nice to have it there instead of having to walk around it. And then the other reason is that I'm trying to set up more workstations that are kind of permanent. The idea here is that this is gonna be like an assembly area when I'm you know, doing the final fitting and adjusting of Kydex sheaths. Uh, little tiny things, like I can leave my heat gun always plugged in, always ready to go. I mean, I put it on this side, um, but you know, if I've got five or six sheaths to do, I'll, I'll take this little block here and I can set the heat gun on there so it doesn't melt anything or burn anything but I can kind of do all my fitment and, and sit down here. So I don't have any shelves on the other side of this, on the underneath of it. I wanna be able to sit in here, move my feet around. And then another thing I really wanted this for was for filming so that when I'm doing things like Tool Time Tuesday or segments where I wanna sit down and just do a talk to the camera or something, I can sit right there comfortably and I don't have to. Before I was sitting right here, like I had a chair up against here and obviously I can't put my legs underneath there and so it's kind of uncomfortable. So that was one change that I've done. Obviously I need to move some stuff. I'm gonna keep my camera gear permanently in here, uh, nice and dust free. Just keep all my gear right there. Uh, those speakers I wanna mount up on the wall. And then this here is kind of my shipping packaging area so I can print off orders. Um, I've got all my packaging materials. And then I also keep a few other things that I need to find permanent homes for like my Wicked Edge right there and then my razor, uh, razor sharp edge mate, razor, whatever, that, the wheels, the paper wheels. And then I keep my Kydex and my Kydex materials. I do still want to find permanent homes for these and I, I kind of set them up in different locations and find ones that are going to work properly. The idea is that to be really efficient, you know, if I'm making, you know, say if I make seven, eight knives a week, you know, it's a pain to have to get out the sharpener several times. If you're using a sharpener every single day, you should probably have it set up permanently. Same thing with the Kydex Press. If I'm using it every day or even every other day, so nice to have a permanent home for it. So that's where I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get all my tools that are used on a very regular basis to have permanent homes. And so I'm kind of moving them around playing with them. Once I find out a really good workflow that I like, I'll actually like anchor everything down and get it all totally set up. But 
it's a process. Over here, one change that I have is this is a big like storage unit that I built, but there's tons of wasted space. When you look in here, just look at all the room that is wasted. So what I'd like to do is build some vertical drawers, put drawer slides in where I can put like all my aerosol cans and have them slide out this way. Uh, I need better storage for this because like I say, look at all this volume that's wasted here. And I either need to make better shelving within these shelves or some drawers or something like that. But there's a lot of like, I'd like to have one area dedicated just for leather work and I can keep my leather stored in my leather tools, all that stuff. This is for all like oils and Windex wood glue kind of big jugs. That one went rogue. That's kind of what this area is going to be for. And then again, I still need to do some organization under here. And with this being kind of a multi-functional shop, like I've got some of my power tools, all my carpentry tools in here, but I do want to get this slightly better organized and then probably put doors on this and kind of cover it up. This was the bench that I had out in the shipping container shop. And I keep all my tools that I use on a very regular basis out, you know, my files, screwdrivers that I'm always using, stuff like that. And I've actually moved my Kydex press. I think this is going to be its permanent home. As well as my granite surface plate, it just makes sense to have this permanently out so that when I need to mark a knife or if I need to do some sanding on it, it's always there and I'm not putting it. I used to always take it from here, put it to there, but sometimes I'd be doing that several times a day and that's just so inefficient. So this one area that, that's getting fairly close, here's like my little hand sanding station. Um, I'm going to leave this here. Now my Fordham, I would like to find a better spot for that and I'm half thinking about permanently putting it on a hook here. That way I can sit down here. Again, you see there's no storage underneath here. I'm, I'm free and clear. And I can do my assembly and use my Fordham. So the idea, again, is just to get everything in a permanent home. And the one thing with the Fordham is a lot of time you're doing some very finesse work. Like, you know, I use these little cotton buffs for cleaning up the edges of Kydex. Well, when I'm doing that, I might as well be sitting down. And I think that is the best place to do it at. That's kind of my thinking. And then we come over to here, uh, what a mess. So anyways, we've got the trash can there and then my heat treat thing. What I'm thinking about doing is putting a bench in here and actually putting my kiln underneath the bench. That would give me a whole nother work surface and there is where I might put my uh, Kydex press. I could get a better mount for my plate quenching for plate quenching aluminum. And uh, I was worried about heat, like if I had it mounted underneath here or something, but I really don't think it's gonna be a problem. If I leave enough clearance in there, and uh, I wouldn't leave it unattended, but I think I'll be totally fine mounting that underneath a wooden workbench. I've seen a lot of guys do that, and I honestly don't think it's a huge concern. So I might try that out and kind of build this in with a workbench tool about right here. Now I left this cabinet intact right here because this is where I keep a lot of my uh, other filming accessories and stuff like that. I like to have that. Uh, right at this spot nice kind of keeps the dust out and then here's the one single workbench that I made for my milling machine and my lathe originally I'd taken my lathe out of here and put it back into the sea can but I thought you know what I use this enough when I'm making tools uh, you know bike parts or anything like that it's nice to have this it's nice to have it in here I was thinking you know I can leave that out in my shipping container shop and just back and forth but then there's the crossover with tools and measuring tools and it's just so nice to have it here so I'm kind of glad I did this and then I still have to do some customized storage here I did build a little place to keep all my steel stock right here so that's what this is dedicated for this front part here is all carbon steels and the back is stainless steels and then uh, I picked this up for like 10 cents at a garage sale it's not ideal but I can keep some of the main little cutting tools and stuff that I use all the time for my lathe right in here the rest of them are in my big roll cabinet and then I've just got some other accessories and accoutrements for the lathe you know different chucks and steady rests follow rests and all that stuff now over on this side of shop I've got some clamp storage I moved my sandblast cabinet to right there from over there and I like a lot better because now I can just hook up my dust collector. I leave my dust collector in one location and I can just hook it up to whatever machine I need it on. Uh, this is a tool that I'm really growing to love and I know I, I used to love what it did but I hated using it because it was so messy. So all I did, I put a dust collection port on the back here and this thing creates no dust in the shop. Like it is absolutely amazing how well it works. And uh, you know, a lot of people I hear them say, I love the sandblasting cabinet, but I hate using it. If you hook up dust collection to it, you will love using it. Like check this bag out. Like that is all sand. And I know I'm losing a lot of sand, but when I'm using this dust collector to take scale off from heat treating or to prep G10 for glue up, uh, you know, that sand's constantly being contaminated. So 
I thought, you know what, if it goes into there and I throw that out, I don't mind just refreshing the sand and using it. I mean, it is a consumable, and this way it just kind of keeps cycling, and it's staying fairly clean in there. Really, really happy with this setup. Then coming over to this side here, uh, I've got my 2x72 grinder, and again, we did all those modifications to it so it can go horizontal, and I've got the VFD on it. I still plan on building a solid piece workbench here. And one thing that I had done once I got this set up, I disassembled my horizontal grinder. This is the base for my horizontal belt grinder. I ended up using the table as a mount for my portable bandsaw. Now this is gonna change because while I do love having the VFD, I mean before this grinder was one speed and it was really, really fast. And then this one here was set up nice and slow for the small wheels. But I'm finding it to be such a pain in the butt not to have my small wheels set up all the time. You know, even for simple stuff like when I'm doing Kydex, a lot of times, you know, a rough profile it on here and then you wanna do some inside features. It was so nice to have this ready to go and I could just turn it on and boom and I could jump between the two machines. Well, now I've gotta go over here, grab a tooling arm, swap it out and it's, it's slowing down the process a lot and it's really starting to bug me. And this is one of those things, you know, I made the change. I thought this is gonna be so much better. You know, let's minimalize the equipment, have one grinder. Uh, 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 uh. I think the best option is to bring this sucker back. I will have to build a new stand for my portable bandsaw, but uh, that'll probably end up going right here. And then I'll, once I kind of get it all configured properly, I'll reroute all my dust collection and stuff like that. And then mostly I use the dust collection on this. I don't use it so much with steel anymore. I had a small fire in there, not a fire, it was smoldering and smoking, but I still like, I think if I kind of leave the dust collector, when I build my table, I'd like to have it come in and out. And so I can still leave it right here and running, still to pick up some of the dust that's floating in the air. But these buckets are still really effective. You know, the sparks go into there, boom. You've got a place to dunk your blade to keep it cool all the time. And so that's gonna kind of be the plan. And I would like to have the bucket on a hinge so I can move it in and out of the way. So basically I could hinge the bucket out of the way and then slide my dust collector out when I'm doing woods and handle materials and then just slide this back in bring this back over here when I'm doing metal work. So that's kind of the plan for this area. And then over here, we've got two drill presses set up. Uh, just a nice little setup here. I usually leave this one set up for mostly just uh, pilot drilling stuff, and then this is for bigger stuff. And then underneath there is just storage for my tooling arms for my grinders. A little Duar for our liquid nitrogen right there, ferric chloride. And again, once I have this bench built out, those will be kind of tucked underneath there. And, uh, so that's kind of where the, the work shop is at right now. Some things I'd still like to do is I need to figure out proper belt storage. Um, over here, what I did in my assembly area is I got a couple of these. This is an Ikea unit. And I got a couple of drawers that I can keep brand new belts in. I'm probably gonna get one more because I'm kind of crowded. Um, but I'd like to figure out a really good way to store belts in this area. And I'm still thinking about doing some storage. I mean, I've got 12 foot ceilings in here. Uh, you can see some of the acoustic panels I've put up on the ceiling, but I've got a lot of room wasted up in here that I could use for storage. So that's kind of, I don't know. I've also thought about putting a small mezzanine up in there. I'm not entirely sure, but that's pretty much where it's at right now. It's funny cause I bet it like in the what, three, four months we've been in here. I've probably done some, about 10 pretty significant changes to the layout in here. And it's amazing how many times you keep going and going and going and some changes you try them, like the horizontal grinder, you try that out and I just hated it. And I'm like, that was a, that was a mistake. And then other things like this table right here, I mean, I put that in and I probably worked there for like four hours yesterday, four hours sitting down. I've never worked sitting down before, but having tried it yesterday and the way I felt at the end of the day, it's amazing how much less fatigued I was. So, you know, if you've got, if you've got a task where you're doing like two or three hours at a time, even an hour or half an hour, if you can do it just as efficiently seated, well, why not, right? I mean, you're still moving around the shop, you're still getting supplies and stuff, but just to be able to sit down there, crank a podcast, crank the radio, whatever, and, and work and efficiently work, so nice. So that's the goal. That's what I'm continually working for. Uh, you know what? I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts. What's the, I would love to know what the one favorite thing about your workspace is. The thing that you've done that you said this made the hugest difference. You know, it could be something simple like anti-fatigue floor mats. I'd like to get some more of those underneath any station where I have to be standing at. I'd love to hear what you guys uh, think about this and uh, kind of you know, it'd be so cool to hear what your favorite thing in your shop that you've done is and, and why you did it and the difference that it made. But anyways, just figured I'd share this with you. Uh, I've got some more work on some other knives to do today. Gonna get on some sanding blocks and then tomorrow, tomorrow I should be able to get started on uh, a little bit more work. Maybe I'll actually start putting designs to steel on the frame lock project. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.